Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation. What you do today really is your own choice. For me, I think I'm going to shave. I kind of have this habit of shaving after Easter, just one of those things. But when we choose to arrange our day any way that we choose to live it, we make a decision, sometimes based just on feelings. I don't feel like going to work today. And so you don't. Sometimes we make decisions based on wisdom. Maybe I should go to work so I can pay my bills. That's a good idea. Maybe I should stop and listen to what the Lord might say today. That's a good idea. Maybe I should read my Bible and see what he has to say. That's a good idea. There's lots of good ideas that are out there. But even a religious idea doesn't necessarily have to be what God is telling you to do. What you should do is begin to develop a personal relationship with God so that you talk to him and he talks to you. You develop a friendship. God always wanted and has always desired for you to know him in a more personal, intimate way. He wants you to develop a personal relationship with him in an intimacy that you might not be comfortable with at first because a lot of people in Western culture kind of have a funny idea about men on men or men with men having a real closeness or camaraderie, an intimacy as it were, a tenderness towards each other. We're told that in the Bible it says, kiss the son lest he be angry. And yet, we only think of one kiss that we can think of with Jesus. That was when Judas kissed him. Men have kissed men before. And I know that sounds weird to some people because we're living in a culture right now that is terrified and also worried about this gay agenda and these kind of things that unfortunately have been distorted into the extreme perversion of what God intended. Kissing a man on the cheek is no big deal. Kissing him on the lips might be questionable. And I know that there's a, in the Greek Orthodox Church, that's not surprising to do in some Russian Orthodox churches too. But we have lots of times our own biases and prejudices that we bring to the table when we're looking at what others do. Do you think maybe we bring that same kind of bias and prejudice when we look at what God is doing? Do you think maybe sometimes we sit down and we read our Bible with some types of glasses that maybe aren't in focus, that no longer fit our poor eyesight as it's gotten worse from the things that we've taken in? Maybe it's time we have a fresh awareness of what God is doing. Maybe we need to clean the earwax out. Maybe take a time and a place, you know, to divulge ourselves or divest ourselves of all the accumulated junk that we've got in our trunk. The things that we're carrying around every day. The hurts, maybe. The pains. Some of the memories from the past. Some of the anxieties we have of the future. We choose often to regroup and refresh ourselves by having a sabbatical. A lot of intelligent people will take a sabbatical and leave their vocation or their job for a vacation in order to wind down because they're wound up in their avocation. Likewise, the Bible tells us sometimes to be still or come to the waters and stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I know every teardrop when in darkness you cried, and I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Today, if you feel overwhelmed by all that's happening, and you just don't feel like reading your Bible, if you feel confronted by your emotions and you're just clenched into a knot that you just don't want to talk to God about, it's okay. You can cry and let go and let God. Many times I have found that 
I can get into a rich religious regimen where every day I think I have to do something that is about God. Something that is always right. Something that is always heading in His sight to do the right thing. But you know, sometimes, maybe, you need to just feel like you're free to do what you want to do. And God's not going to beat you up for it. God's not going to stomp on you. God's not going to romp on you. God's not going to chew you to pieces, you know, and spit you out. If anything, God sees where your heart is at. And if sometimes you're rubbed raw, if sometimes you're bleeding from an open wound, if sometimes you need to be by the still waters, don't be afraid to let go and have a good cry. Not just cry out to God, but learn, even as a man has to learn how to cry, learn to be able to give yourself the freedom to cry with God, to just be also brokenhearted before Him to be so cleansed from within of all the hurts and pains that you've had. Because if you think that you're being healed of them when you're holding them like a fist inside, when it comes time and God wants to deal with that, you will crack and fall and fail. But if you let it go each day to take to the Lord in prayer and ask Him, God, if there be any me, if there be in me any wicked way you see in me, let me now confess it to you and let you find it and remove it from me that I cannot see. Let me now find myself in the stillness of your grace, poured out like waters before you. God, let my tears come unto you and let me cry, for I'm hurting, O oh God, and I need my Father and not my God. Sometimes there's a place for that in your life that maybe you've never thought of before. Maybe you're one of those control freaks that has to have everything in control and you've never let your emotions out. That's what devotion's about, letting your emotions out. I used to call it emotional devotional because if you're not having feelings, you're failing in what God has created you to be, a being spiritual and physical, emotional and devotional, a being that has emotions that God created for you to experience. And one of them is sorrow. For godly sorrow bringeth repentance. In other words, great angst in your heart sometimes will cause you to fall flat on your face to look up and cry out to God and just cry with no real prayer with no real statement to be needed to be said because God can already tell what's in your mind and heart and see where you're at. It's not about a restart or a new start. It's about being real with your God and discovering that He's alive and living, that He wants to comfort you in those times when He knows you've been carrying the burden too long. You've been wearing the cross too much. Even Jesus himself could not bear his own cross, but he had to have help. And so are you. You need help today, whether you'll admit it or not. And one way or another, God helps you, whether through the Spirit of God or by the ministers of God, whether by the angels that are ministering unto you or arranging your circumstances to cause you to be protected. You are being met in your need. But there's also that time where even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane wept and he felt the overwhelming burden and he needed to release it to his father in a real struggle that he was going through. If you can, when you can, whether in the bathroom, in the shower, you just need to cry, or whether in a park, in a quiet place or in the dark in some meaningful way or tears on your pillow or crying in some other way. Take the time today to get real with God and ask Him to lead you not just to pray but to let go of your emotional need to Him. To let down the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the 
preparation of the gospel of peace on your feet, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit, and to just stand naked before your God with nothing else except your love for Him and your hurt and your pain. And just stand and let God hug you today. We all need a hug. We all need to hear from God. We all need to be loved by God. So today, when you hear His voice, harden not your heart, because God wants to love on you, even as you in worship often love on Him. I am here, here as truly as I was with the disciples of old, here to help and to bless you, here to company with you, do you know, even yet, my children, that this is the priceless blessing of your lives? I forgive you, as you have prayed me to, for all neglects of my commands. But start anew from today. Study my words and carry them out unflinchingly. unflinchingly. As you do this, you will find that you are miracle workers and working together with me and for me, and I through you and you in me. Remember this, not what you do, but what you are. That is the miracle working power, not what you accomplish, but what you're and who you're with. Changed by my spirit, shedding one garment of spirit for a better, in time throwing that aside for a yet finer one, and so on from character to character, gradually transformed into my likeness. I know you have need of joy. Let my joy be made full in that you have love for one another and you allow me to love you even as I have demonstrated my love to you by dying on the cross. I can't think of a more intimate thing than when Jesus spoke to me and challenged me in ways that was amazing and have rearranged my life accordingly. It caused me to consider my ways regularly, and I go through days where I have to stop what I'm doing and think about what Jesus said only, without reading it, without finding it, without texting it, without seeing it, without hearing it. I have to think about it. And that's what we should do today, and every day in video today. We should think on these things, think about it. Find something that's hurting you and think about it. But talk about it or let go your emotions about it to God so that you can together find the realization that yes, yes, no matter where you are, no matter how you are, no matter what you think today, God loves you. You know, if you need to hear it from someone, you know, that's maybe not in heaven, maybe someone that's not so perfect and not so all together. If you need to hear it from someone who's maybe just, hey, if you were here, my arms are open wide. I'd give you a hug. I don't have to do the half hug. We can do the full bear hug. Sorry, I don't have that problem. So I can just hug you to death. I can hug you with the purity of God's love for you. Because you know what? I've been where you are, and I know what it's like to hurt and to cry and to be tenderized. If you're just starting to learn that, start hugging people at church. Start getting what you need emotionally. And I think you'll find devotionally God will be there with someone who will be Jesus in disguise. Because they won't give you one of these like, hey, bro, how you doing? You know, nice touch, nice touch. Nice Nice day, isn't it? Yeah, praise the Lord. You know. Got to do the nice you know, church hug. But there'll be somebody there that'll just love you and says, God bless you. And gives you the biggest bear hug imaginable. And you'll just start crying. Because that's what happened to me. And that's what I do for others now. In Jesus' name.